Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's doing really good. I have some channel messages and I have cards that we're gonna pull and we're just gonna see how this goes. I'm getting the writings on the wall, the writings on the wall. And it's so crazy because the other day I was walking out of here, out of the kitchen into the dining room area and on the wall was this language like all over the wall. And I've seen this one time before, but this was like different. And yeah, it's interesting. All these language things have been coming through, um, light language. And if you don't know how to interpret your light language or translate it into the language that you know, or that you speak, I have a course on how to do that. Um, and it's really awesome. And it's pre-recorded it's an hour long and it teaches you step by step how to do it for yourself so if you're ever receiving light language and you're like damn it i wish i knew what this meant besides just the intuitive knowing okay because we get intuitive knowings on what things mean but to like actually decipher what it's saying and telling you and trying to tell you it's awesome i highly recommend the course it's light language course part two Okay, and if you wanted to learn how to speak, write light language or channel it, um, that would be my light language, language course part one. So, but anyways, I walked in there and there was uh, writing on the wall and then these ancient languages have been coming through me, channeling through me, light language. Um, and then I've been pushed to translate some older light language I had received through an ancient Coptic version which is super ancient. And I was getting all these crazy messages, which I don't have time to go over. But if I do in the future, and I'm told by spirit to share that knowledge, I will. Um, but I'm getting the writings on the wall. I'm getting a lot of ancient languages coming through. Are you just knowing how to, a lot of you could be scribes like myself or translators like myself, where you just know how to go about doing these things quite naturally. Um, yeah. It's very, I, I'm telling you, I can literally translate any language, no matter how ancient it is. And it's crazy, right? That's crazy, but it's not. It's like once you get the intuitive downloads on how to do things and you trust spirit and you follow their guidance, bada boom, bada bang, bada bang, then you know how to do things, okay? You know how to decipher things, you know how to translate things and how to find ways to give them meaning, meanings. Um, intuitively and through like a logistical sense. So yeah, I'm getting symbolic symbols, um, ancient languages, unveiling truths to a world not yet ready for them. So this is kind of what I'm doing as a scribe and as a translator. And I'm sure many of you who are watching this, you have ways of deciphering ancient languages or light languages that unveil hidden truths, different truths to help guide the population, to help guide the collective. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to help guide, okay? Different puzzle pieces of that direction. And we're here to assist in that. So I'll show a video of that writing on the wall that I found. If I can find it on my phone, I'll insert it here. Then I was watching a video and the song in the video was Mary, Mary Meg by Heroin Honey, which I uploaded a while ago to my Insta because when it popped up, I was like, oh, it's so, so good. But then I was like, what? They're saying about Mary Magdalene? I was like, no way. And like so many things have just been coming in divinely. So I wrote it down. I wrote down Mary Meg and then something told me to write her name, this version backwards. And it's Gam, G-A-M-Y. Ram, R-A-M. So we know the Ram is Aries, right? Isn't it? Isn't the Ram Aries? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And Gam, like Gamma Ray or Gamma something. I don't know. There's something there. And it might be, um, I'll have to put this into Coptic translation is what they're telling me to do in a few different languages um, to see how that comes through. Because I haven't done that yet and I was meaning to. But as you know, um, I'm a channel, so I'm multidimensional, which means I get a lot of different things in and a lot of different inputs and um, then re-input into the collective back is what I do. Um, 
I was watching Game of Thrones and I've been playing this Game of Thrones game. And what drew me in initially was like the dragons from it. And my dragon guides, as you guys know, have been coming in so strongly. And I, like I said, I don't know if it's because it's the year of the dragon could possibly be, or it's just that timing divinely where, cause I don't need labels for things to make sense necessarily. Like I, like, yeah, they do help validate things, but like, once you know your truth and what you receive and trust as truth, that's all you need. Like, literally, that's all you need. But if you're wanting more direction, then it's good to find other things that are presenting to you from spirit because there's always a divine purpose. Why? So anyways, I was, I was drawn to this game, the Game of Thrones Conquest, because of the dragons in it. And so I've been playing that. If you're drawn to dragons at this time, that might be a fun game for you to play. Um, and so I have my dragon right now and it's in it's a certain level. Like it goes from like hatchling, which is just like a baby to whelp, which is like in between the baby and the adolescent phase. And then there's like the adolescent and then it gets older and older and there's all these different stages and things you have to do and train your dragon how to do. And I swear to God, you guys like, just a minute ago, hubby had the news on, which I hate watching, but I look up for two seconds and right below the news thing where all the words are passing by through the script at the bottom, it said, how to train your dragon park. How to train your dragon park. And so I'm like, damn, like there's things I still need to do with my dragons and not yesterday, not the day before, I think it was like three or four days ago, I was outside with my daughter. We were looking up in the sky and we came back from our walk. And I swear to you, there were three dragons shaped as clouds in the sky. This cloud in the sky literally looks like a dragon to me. You guys see it? There's the eye. There's like the smoke coming out of its mouth. There's the little legs and the tail and its wings and its little eerie thing. It's a dragon for sure. The first part, doesn't it look like an eye and a mouth? Yeah. Ain't that weird? Yeah, it does. Like it looks like a head of a dragon, but the rest is a spine. Yeah. They're everywhere. You know that clouds are fairy tales, right? Yeah. And I see a Z above it, too. Oh, yeah. That little Z. And I also see, like, an E. You see an E? Yeah, right there. Crazy. What the heck? Maybe that forms out the name of it. Maybe that's the mom trying to get her baby. Yeah. That's so cool. This one looks like a dragon, too. The wings, the straight thing, and then below it, you can see the head. It's a dragon. And then my friend wrote me back. After I posted that post, and she's like, yep, that's how they show themselves to you. Those are yours. Those are your dragons. So me and my daughter both saw all three of them. What was interesting, under the first one, I see like the letter M. Under the second one, we looked to the right, I saw the letter Z. And then my daughter saw the letter E, and I looked to the left, and there was another dragon. She's like, maybe if you put them together, they make a certain name. As I'm looking right now at the picture that my daughter drew, it's like a hill. There's like the letter M that looks just like the one under the dragon. Uh, the first dragon that I saw. But anyways, so I'm like, well, maybe their names start with those letters or maybe it's like a clue or a key or something. So I wrote that down in the notes of my phone. Um, and it was just a really interesting occurrence. Like it was really cool to see them in the sky. And like I've seen stuff like that before, but never like really, I don't know, thought of it as like that distinctive or that, like there was definitely a divine reason why they were like, no, these are dragons, like my guides, like, and I've been seeing them so much like that it's everywhere. Like it, it's taking up everything. Everything's dragons right now. So I'm like, huh, 
This is really cool, interesting. They're trying to teach me something. They're trying to show me something here. So anyways, I'm watching uh, Game of Thrones Conquest. I'm playing that game. And then I'm watching uh, Game of Thrones, like old scenes from like that show, the first one, because I don't know, I've just been guided to like go back and like watch some of these scenes that are like just popping up on my For You page. And a lot of ancient clues about ancient Tartaria are coming through, like the mechanics of it all, the technology, 911 just now on the clock, which is my birth time backwards. Um, it's also Twin Towers, Twin Flames, all that, Yeshua, Mary Mag. Um, I was also told that Yeshua and Mary Magdalene both rode dragons. Um, there's just like so much I'm finding out that's so cool. Um, unicorns were in the Bible. Yes, unicorns were in the Bible. Um, just like all this stuff coming through. So I'm watching these old scenes from Game of Thrones and in it, it's showing maybe what possibly happened in Tartaria and why they depicted like Daenerys as one of the main characters that acquires the dragons. Like she is literally the mother of dragons. She walks into fire and with the eggs of the dragons and out when the fire settles, there's dragons coming from behind her on her back and she literally gave birth to dragons. So Daenerys, mother of dragons, like what else does that remind you of? Like the seeding of the world, the seeding of the populace, Sophia and her dragon. So interesting stuff. So and then I'm like thinking, okay, well, was Tartaria conquered because of the woman ruling there like I, I got to thinking like because I know there was like also kings and queens and like all kinds of things and also like monarchies and stuff like that but I'm thinking like is this why Tartaria was taken over by the patriarchy because they felt threatened by the woman there because in the scene like where Daenerys is I think setting to fire her husband after he passes and then she burns the witch who made it all happen. It's like a depiction of what happened. Like they burned the witches, but fire, but dragons birthed from the flames and they were under the ruling of the females. And then the Tartaria flag is, or, or the one flag is of them literally killing the dragon, like spearing the dragon. Yes, the Russian coat of arms flag. See the white horse right there? Wait, first I want to show this is the, the Tartarian flag. Tartaria, Tartary, Grand Tartary. This is their flag. Look closely, okay? You ready? Now look at the Russian air. Like, look at the Russian flag. Look at that right there, dude. Look closely. Dude, just saying, man. And as we can see where Grand Tartary, aka Tartaria, was right here. Is now where Russia is. And now the Russian flag, coat of arms, whatever, is literally the dragon being slayed. I mean, that's just, just can't be a coincidence. What do y'all think, you know? And taking over Tartaria. But Tartaria was originally that dragon emblem or the griffin or Gryffindor or the dragon, okay? They both look very similar and it's just really interesting. So. Maybe the patriarchy, this is just a hypothetical idea that came through intuitively. And like I said, I'm, I don't know if it's accurate. I don't know, but it's just interesting. So the patriarchy wanted power. So they took over, they chained away her dragons. So in one of the scenes, Daenerys, she, her dragons are like, I don't know, like out of control or something. I forget exactly what happened, but she had to chain up her dragons, which are her babies, essentially. And then she puts them in the cave.
rolls the stone in front. And I'm like, damn. They chained away her dragons and rolled the stone like the Jesus story. Like the Jesus story. It's also just really, there's so much here that's running through my brain right now. So also Jon Snow died and then was resurrected. Like they resurrected him with the lady in the red cloak, which reminds me of Mary Meg as well. There's a lot of symbolism here, but since Jon Snow was resurrected, and that's like Daenerys' twin flame or whatever. And then Daenerys is killed at the end by him. And then the dragon carries her away. Is she going to be resurrected as well? I don't know. There's like theories and hypotheses of this. Um, but it's interesting. So she, in the scene, chained away her dragons. But I feel like the patriarchy chained away the dragons in the Middle Earth or in the caves or something. And yeah, there's something there because in every photo of Tartaria, it's like they're stabbing and slaying dragons. It's like, what the fuck is this? And it's like in a lot of other mythologies as well, like throughout the world. It's not just Tartaria, but Tartaria was like all of the world pretty much almost. So um, Hyperborea too. And there's this girl on TikTok who I've been following because one of her videos about the Mercury and the gears and stuff and the castles of Tartaria kept popping up on my page and like everything she was seeing and like intuitively getting from these shows such as Game of Thrones and things were like really opening up so much with inside of me that made so, it just, it clicked, you know? It made sense of things that I've been trying to figure out that like intuitively it's like I knew, but I couldn't like piece it all together. It was like right there, you know? And so um, I'll list her name down here. Find a comment, your GOT intro, mind blown, good call. It's about a video I made. Yeah. Check out the rotation on this magnet on top of Mercury. You see metal floats on Mercury and magnets create a spin. This is how pyramids were built. Here's an example. Beneath the Teotihuacan Pyramid, a hidden chamber unveiled liquid Mercury. And then there's this weird giant thing in the middle. Imagine if that giant hole had a metal thing with magnets and now that's liquid Mercury and it's just gonna spin indefinitely that's creating a magnetic field of force that creates free electricity now most of the architecture we see now is petrified but it wasn't always it was made of metal and they were harnessing the energy from the earth battery and combining it with the atmospheric ether that's in our ionosphere there is electricity right now in our hair that's what makes our hair stand up static electricity with a balloon hmm. See, they destroyed all these crazy Tartarian technology buildings and call them museums or orphanages or hospitals or universities. They are Tartarian architecture that was used to harness energy. Now that we have PG&E, we don't need that. Somewhere on my profile is a video showing a lot of different structures rotating and moving just like the Game of Thrones intro, which I'm about to show you right now. This is the opening credits, and there's a lot of different things we can go into, but let me just show you how all of the structures were moving. Gears, axles, look at that. Everything was actually moving parts, and what we may think is petrified stone, it used to be metallic structures, and metal floats on mercury. So if the entire world has mercury underneath, all of these metal pieces just float and move on their own. The earth is a battery. Every castle was connected using the Great Wall of China, which is actually the Great Wall of Tartaria. I'm pretty sure castles are petrified metallic structures that were used to harness energy and distribute it throughout the electric cities, electricity. And although Game of Thrones is just another TV series, they hide a lot of things in entertainment. Let's watch the intro to Game of Thrones, where you can see gears and switches activating different things. 
here you see something turn on and now you've got liquid red mercury could it be and then it's flowing down all these hidden pathways waterways that you know exist under all of these pyramids and giant structures and they were literally using liquid to activate switches raising things up we wonder how you can raise something that's really heavy well you put enough water underneath it the thing will float and doesn't metal float on mercury it's like the earth is a giant battery and all the castles and structures were connected mainly for harvesting this power source Tartarian structures are not made of stone they're cast out of metal they're moving parts they look like stone but they're not and they're metal which floats on mercury these are instruments engineered and they float on mercury like that thing probably that whole thing probably moves around and when you apply magnets to mercury it spins so this whole thing is an energy machine transformers you see the gap at the bottom of those columns that's because these are gears that turn in fact if you have mercury under them they would turn indefinitely Watch the intro of Game of Thrones where it shows all of these buildings and structures, moving parts, castles, have all these working gears. See that little gap right there? I wanna see if I can go there. San Francisco, that's an hour away. Maybe I can visit. Let's go visit. What? That water's probably got mercury in it. Yeah, so she said, what if the, in Game of Thrones, what if the Targaryens are actually the Tartarians? And I'm like, oh, duh, Targaryens, Tartarians, it makes so much sense. So if the Targaryens are the Tartarians, then the Tartarians did have dragons. Make a lot of sense. Why would they do these mud floods and things and, and chain up dragons and like it just it makes so much sense to me so that's what I wrote down so also I'm gonna pull some cards and see what else comes through Oh wow, so I think we got some of our answers here. Hold on. Yeah, I'm hearing like the conquerors of Tartaria. Like this is literally like some sort of aspect of what went on and what happened in our ancient past. Like this is literally what I'm getting, what happened. And she walked into the fire, right? And I keep seeing the word fire literally everywhere. And what is fire? Fire is Aries. Aries is the ram, like I said, right? And what is Aries? Aries is arise. What is arise? Arise is resurrection. And ascension. So hopefully, hold on. In the show, in the show, okay, she has old Valerian blood, old Valerian bloodline, and can speak the oldest of languages. Yes, 
Senna! Der Senna! Der Senna! Dracarys. And can speak the oldest of languages. And what did we just go over at the beginning? That's like a huge key because if, like, think about it. If you can literally find a way to intuitively even, intuitively decipher ancient languages that other people or scientists or archaeologists or whatever the fuck think that they know, yet they don't even have the right translation for, and you find someone that can literally go in intuitively and find out the actual meaning of some of those words, syllables even, and put them together and like find keys of ancient wisdom that was what they thought quote unquote lost because it was purposefully hidden from us. And you can find someone that's the key for that. And you think of why all the shit is going on in our world right now and why they're trying to quote unquote kill us all off. I mean, doesn't it make sense? And doesn't it make sense that they would be looking for somebody who could quote unquote have that knowledge? Why? Because they quote unquote don't want anyone figuring it out. Why don't they want us to figure out our past? Well, because it would provide us a lot of answers of what was done. And once it comes.